Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Expert to Authority show. And this is the show for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses while making an impact in the world. Um, now, my name is Simone Vincenzi. I'm your host. And today I want to explore the topic of uh, can I make money with my story? Uh, it was a question that was asked during a consultation a couple of months ago, and I put a note uh, knowing that I wanted to talk uh, deeper about this topic because a question that I get asked very often, can I make money with my story? And uh, I think the people that, uh, um, and I think in, in our industry, in the coaching, speaking and training industry, you know, we talk about how important is your story. We talk about the fact that uh, um, your story is there to connect. We have seen uh, people getting paid hun tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions as well by sharing their stories. Um, we look at Brene Brown, we look at Oprah, we look at um, Les Brown as well, um, Tony Robbins. You know, their story, their personal story on top of what they share is a really big part of their business model. We see influencers going and sharing their story. So it is a very legitimate question. Can I make money with my story? And uh, my answer might surprise you a bit. And uh, what I'm going to share with you in this particular episode is uh, what are my thoughts and point of view on this topic, as well as uh, what is the real purpose of your story and where can you use your story in your business. If you're new to the podcast and you haven't subscribed yet, Make sure you subscribe if you're watching on uh, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube channel or our uh, Facebook page as well as uh, our your favorite podcasting platform. Now, let's get started. Can I make money with my story? What do you think my answer was when my prospect, uh, when my potential client said that? My answer was uh, um, the fact that you have actually a powerful story, a sad story or a deep story doesn't determine your success in your industry as a coach, as a speaker or a trainer. Uh, they are very separate. Your success in business has very little to do with your story. Now, let me expand on that. Your story is there to connect with your audience. Your story is there to, or if you had it tough, it might give you that extra boost and that extra motivation. Uh, it might get people to see you under a different light. But what's going to make help you make it in business is your processes, your sales, your marketing, your message, uh, your offers. So these are all the things that are actually going to help you make money in business. So if your thinking is, and hi to everyone that is watching live, uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, if you think, okay, because I have uh, in, uh, some coaches and some other trainers, they will tell you, oh, you have a very inspiring story, so go there and, and make it your business. It's very, very difficult to make your story your business. Your story, as I mentioned, is there to connect, is there to inspire. Your story is there to bridge the gap between you and the audience and the material that you want to teach and the message that you want to leave them. And that's why you might find and you have a lot of people that have a lot of followers because of their stories and their journey, but they don't make any money. Why? Because uh, their story is not linked to their product or services that they are selling. Your product or services and your case studies and your reputation is what is going to get people to buy from you. And the other opposite is, because I had also this conversation, uh, I, was, uh, um, I was at a Christmas party <laughs> with uh, one of my clients and good friends, and it was about three o'clock in the morning, and uh, I was having a conversation with one of the guests there. And uh, she said, well, you know what? I didn't have a tough upbringing. You know, my father and my family had money. They had businesses. I got raised to be an entrepreneur. I had a good head start in life. But that doesn't diminish the fact of what I can give. And sometimes, she, she mentioned, I felt inadequate to share that I was coming from a successful background, from a fa successful family background, didn't have any major trauma in my life. Was I, am I not supposed to be in this industry or to support other people with what I know? No, absolutely you can. So remember, your story, whatever your story is, is there to connect to your audience 
with your product or service uh, or the message that you want to give them. And if we think about our lives, when we talk about your story, you have many stories. You don't have only one story. You have many stories. Your story that you choose to pick is a part of the many stories on the many things that you went through in life. And uh, uh, whenever you are going into the coaching or the speaking industry, I think a lot of people, they go from uh, an element of, I have something to share. I have experiences that I want to share, that I think that sharing those experiences can be valuable to others. I want you to flip it. I want you to flip it and say, okay, what is it you, you feel that you have in you that is valuable to the audience? And then what story gives an example of what is it you want to teach? Because uh, it's not about you sharing what you're going through, what you have gone through. A lot of people, they use uh, sharing your story from the stage as self-therapy. Oh my God, look at me. And it's, it's a sense of validation. You know? And uh, I'm not discounting the fact that people can go through hardship or that people have a hard, hard, hard start in life. But let's look at it from a speaking perspective or from sharing your message perspective. You're there to share your message for your audience. Your audience comes first. You're there to serve your audience. They gave it their time. They give it their money. Uh, if they give it their money, but at least they give it their time to listen to it. So when your audience is listening, it's always filtering for what's in it for me. What is in it for me? And your story is there to create that connection, to give an example of a message that you want to give, to bridge the gap between you as the person who's speaking and the product or service that you're selling or that the, or the message that you want to give if you're not selling anything and your story is the thing in between that bridges you with the message and so whenever you are selecting which story is more relevant for the audience you're going to be speaking in front of or which story is more relevant for the message that you want to deliver then you can look back in your experiences and say well shall I pick? Because you need to be selective. Now, I'm sure that you have been to an event where someone was sharing experiences um, that uh, you were maybe captivated by their story, but at the end, uh, you, you were left like, and so what's the point? <laughs> what was the point of all this? Right? And the reason why is because they haven't thought about the message first. But if you want to be smarter, what you do, you start thinking about the message. Say, what is the message that I want to leave my audience with? And then maybe there is one message in that presentation or in that interview. Maybe there are two messages. Maybe there are three. And then you think about what examples do you have in your personal experience that can validate or given it or um, uh, that can validate that particular message or if it is a product you want to sell that particular product. And that's how you're going to use your stories. So that means that it's not just one story that you're going to select. You're going to change and adapt your story depending on the audience that you're going to speak in front of. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, when I started, um, I started a, in... Um, I remember actually a few years ago, we were working with a lot of people that were at the starting phase of their business. In their coaching and speaking business, they were at the very beginning phase. They were finding their feet. They didn't even know if they wanted to quit their job and move full time into coaching. And so the story that I used to share was the story of struggle that I had by changing country, moving to the UK, learning English, working in restaurants, Fine, attending an event, deciding that I wanted to become a coach, the struggles of the few years that I had to go through, three or four years to, that took to start my coaching business, the first events that we were that we used to run where no one was showing up, uh, the challenges on getting the first client. So why did I share that? Because that resonated with that particular audience to where they were at that stage. But if I'm talking to now, and even now, if I am in front of an audience like this at the very beginning stage, I will choose to select and share that story because that's the story that I've been through that can connect me the most with where they are and create that, ooh, we, can, we have a common ground now. We can connect into something, on something to that, for them to take them into a journey of where I want to lead them. But let's say that now I'm speaking to a room of very successful business owners. 
I'm not going to talk about the very beginning of the journey because I need to meet them to where they are now. So where they are now is that they're running already a business for maybe five to six years. They already have clients. They already made money. They already they are facing different challenges. So I'm talking about the times where I lost motivation in my business. I talk about the challenges that we had in terms of making maybe a wrong investment. And then we had to uh, work another two years to recover from a wrong investment that we made just to recover the cash that we've invested there. Or the moments where I had problems with my team. And now I've learned also how to deal with those problems and managing the team. How we scale the business and the scaling problems that we had. The, loss, the sense of losing my identity by changing from working directly with clients to working more with the team and being more the strategist of the company. Very different environment, very different thinking. It's a very different Simone. So you can see that now we'll have different stories that I will use. Um, I, if, uh, uh, if I'm talking to kids, for example, I will talk about uh, the fact that I started working when I was 14 because uh, my parents split up, my father was an alcoholic, and then we des I decided to say, screw everyone, I'm going to live my life. And I started working at the age of 14. I wanted to be independent. As soon as I could, I moved out of the house. So that's what, and the fact that I felt inadequate at school, that's my message when I talk in my story, when I talk to young people, because I can connect with them on that level. Um, if uh, I'm talking to an audience which is interested in more personal development, for example, and not in business, and the stories that I share is the stories uh, when I would struggle with emotional eating and what was my journey from going through anorexia, um, bulim from bulimia to anorexia to overeating and then going through Overeaters Anonymous. So I had a lot of stories, but let's say that, uh, you know, a very deep, sad story is my journey with food and emotions. That's a story that I know people stop and listen to when they hear it's like, what? Because, you know, he's a man, not used to men talking about emotional issues uh, with food. But there's no link to business. It's not a link to business. I mean, I could make it, I could force a link to business. But I don't talk about it if I'm running a seminar. Unless there is a moment which is relevant. So remember... Can you make money with your stories? Yes. But the fact that you have a story or an emotional story or a sad story or a great story doesn't actually mean you're going to be successful in the business of sharing it. Because your story is there. You will make money if you have a great product, a great service, and a great way to monetize that attention that you create a connection that you create with that story. You will have multiple stories. And you will select your stories based on the message that you want to deliver from the, to the audience. And then you go backward. And in that way, then you can select your stories for your webinars, your stories from your presentation, from the training that you're running, from the interviews, and have a bank of stories that you can use consistently all the time. And that's, for example, one of the things that uh, I know some of you might have already downloaded if you've been listening or watching this for a while, the webinar conversion kit. If you haven't done it, make sure you, you get it. Because while we are helping you create the presentation in the webinar conversion kit, a part of it, this is also sharing elements of your story and giving examples that are relevant to the teaching points that you want to give. In that way, then you will have a story that sells, that will make you money, and that will connect with the audience all at the same time. So, another plug, webinar conversion kit, make sure you check it out webinarconversionkit.com. Uh, the link is in the show notes. So the link is here in the comments as well. So make sure you check it out. Uh, 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 it has been a great uh, um, episode. Uh, I love talking about this topic because when I had that call from that client and the client asked me that question, uh, it actually, um, it, it was, uh, uh, it could have been counterproductive from a sales point of view, but I'm always honest. So I said, well, you know what? This is, this is what I believe. And uh, she actually decided to sign up we said, because I appreciate your honesty instead of just saying, of course, you can make money with your story just because I wanted to sign her up as a client. Having said that, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for listening. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. Or if you are listening to your favorite podcasting platform or watching live, make sure you subscribe to your favorite podcasting platform. Don't miss any other episode. 
of the Expert to Authority Show. And if you are in the Facebook group watching live, thank you for watching live. You are absolutely awesome. So make sure you check also the link uh, that is in the comments to join the Facebook group, the Expert to Authority Facebook group. I will see you next episode. And until then, always remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.